Hi everyone, she started in 2007 with La Traviata, progressively from Mozart to Giuseppe Verdi, from the French opera to bel canto, passing by Russian opera to concerts and recitals, she has become one of the most considerable talent as a soprano, driven by the splendid international career. Native of Latvia, she is now living in Riga, currently confined in her country house by the sea. I'm always fascinated by the energy she spreads and this involvement that allows her to keep control on her career. Led with a true intelligence, who is nevertheless goes forward with resolution and great steps. Next year she will be performing Leonora in Trovatore at the Paris Opera House. In the meantime, she passionately introduced to us the album L she just released, a record label, the figure she incarnates on a project. As the face-to-face -face interview became impossible, we took the possibility to realize, through the technological means we fortunately had at our disposal, a telephone interview on Monday, the 30th of March 2020. You are listening to the podcast of Paul Fourier in partnership with ToutelaCulture.com and here is the interview of Marina Rebecca. Bonjour Marina. Bonjour Paul. First off, thank you to grant us this interview in this tragic time of coronavirus epidemic. May I ask you to start this interview? Where are you right now? Does everything is going well for yourself and family? I am now in Latvia in my country house. Uh, we stay all together, family. Uh, the place is really wonderful. It's not far from the beach and we have a studio here. So uh, we're wonderful because in a certain sense, it's a kind of a forced holiday. And obviously every opera singer has lots of things to study. So I have some new roles to study. I have some projects which I already reco uh, recorded and it needs to be edited so we're working on that and um, yes it's it's a very fortunate situation for me that i'm i'm here in the country house i'm very sorry for all the people who have to stay in the small apartments and who cannot go out and the situation is very very difficult for many people so i i feel for them Marina, it happens that you are just releasing a record of French opera arias, um, which I must say is absolutely remarkable. Which struck me first, beyond the quality of the interpretation, is the quality of your French diction. How did you work on it? Merci beaucoup. Eh, C'était un travail grand avec Mathieu Pordoy, eh, mon pianiste et notre produ producer. Uh, yes, it's very, very important uh, in any language, I guess, to have a very clear diction so the people who speak this language can connect very good with the music. And in French, obviously, it's, uh, uh, it's a big uh, responsibility because you have all the nasals, some specific sounds, uh, some specific accents, and it makes this music even more tasteful, even more special let's put it that way so um it was wonderful work and i wish that in future we we'll continue working on other french operas uh, chamber music uh, french um, but i'm very very happy that you do understand what i said even if i don't speak french so clearly in my life i i miss vocabulary i know some grammar but uh Obviously, if I do a project which is a recording, I really care for the pronunciation. I'm very happy that you understood everything.
So we just listened to an extract of the aria Depuis le jour from the opera Louise by Gustave Charpentier. It's absolutely splendid. Marina, whereas you already performed Marguerite from Gounod's Faust on stage, as well as some other heroines, how did you come up with the idea of a complete disc dedicated to the French opera of the 19th century? Uh, the idea was long ago, actually in my head and in my heart, because Mm, the French music and French opera music, also chamber music, but opera music more, uh, is has a very specific place in my heart. Uh, it's a uh, music full of colors. It's a music where singer and orchestra, let's say, play golf or play 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 a bo ball. So I pass the idea, I pass the emotion, and orchestra replies to me with its colors, with its um, accents. So. Uh, The text is very important. The language is beautiful. Um, I had a good chance before to to work on French music because I did several of these roles which I recorded. I did already on stage, as you mentioned, it's Marguerite, which I did in Riga, then I did in Monte Carlo and uh, in um, Madrid. Then I did G Romeo Juliet. I did uh, already in Arena di Verona and in Vienna. I did also Le Conte d'Offman. Um, I did, um, what else did I do? I did Thais in Salzburg uh, with Placido Domingo. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do Manon. Uh, I did Carmen, but the role of Michaela. Um, so this CD combines some areas which I already did on stage and some which I really love, but I didn't have yet a chance to do on stage. While preparing this episode, you told me that there is a shared and common evolution during these operas for heroines like Marguerite, Juliette, Leila in Les Pêcheurs de Perles. At start, there are young girls whose evolution will make them women marked by their personal journey. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, this is a very interesting thing in French music that we see quite often that the voice of the singer, in this case of the female uh, leader voice of soprano, changes during the opera and it actually gets into the, the, into the personality. So let's take Juliette. She comes out as a girl and she starts this uh, first entrance uh, doing um, color, some coloraturas and very light, very joyful. She gets in the first Age Vivre. Uh, she gets also in some coloraturas, the high notes. The more she becomes in love, the more she becomes full, the more she becomes a woman, the more dramatic the voice becomes. So when we hear the second aria with Poison, we already hear a different Juliet, which is very different vocally and emotionally from the first one. And when we get to the last final scene, it's already a woman full of love, passion, despair, with a big experience. Uh, the same type of uh, development we can see also in Leila, uh, where in the first aria she sings, it's, it's very light, it's uh, ob obvious, it's magic as well, but uh, the way how it's written, it's quite high, it has coloraturas, it, it's a different type of singing than Como autrefois, because there it's already a little bit more sensual, more woman. And the more she goes on, the more dramatic she becomes. Also vocally, when we think how she gets into the duet with Zurga, it's uh, almost a different voice. You know, it's very full, very uh, dramatic. Uh, the same pattern we could say also was in uh, Manon, because uh, a part of Gavotte, Uh, and the other aria in, in, the, in the casino, the role itself is quite lyric. But there are a few of these episodes which I think were not originally there, they were added after. Uh, but again, where the frivolity and lightness is also in music as a passage, as, as, as lightness, as coloraturas, as a specific high register, but the fullness and the true and the, the woman in love, the passion incarnates into the fuller sounding. So it's a very interesting challenge for a singer who can portray both. And this is what I also wanted to show. So you listed the heroine you already performed on stage. Are there any more of them on the album as Manuel Chimène that you are planning to explore later? 
No, absolutely. I would love to do these roles on stage. Uh, this is a kind of a look into the future, from the past into the future. For, for example, I don't think that I will be singing Leila anymore, but I definitely would love to do Le Cid. I would love to do Manon, if there would be a possibility. I would love to do L'Enfant Prodigue. I would love to do Carmen, even Carmen, you know, because there were some sopranos who did it. I mean, maybe not now, maybe a little bit later, but... Um, it's it's a beautiful music. I definitely would like to do it on stage. To this wonderful aria of Lucide from your album Hell, there is a question I would like to discuss. Um, you decided with your husband to fund your own record label. Um, can you tell us about it and why you made this choice? Yes, it was a very unusual decision uh, to make this uh, record label together with my husband, the le record label called Prima Classic. Uh, there were several reasons for that. One of the main reason I could tell is that I wanted to leave the testimonial of what I can do in the best way possible. Best mean best singing, best choosing of takes, best uh, in sense of picture, best in sense of text, the most care possible. Uh, I'm a very big perfectionist, so I want everything to be as good as maximum it can be. Obviously, to do that, you need much more time because you need to go through all the edits and to choose really best material to join it together. Very often, uh, when I had my previous experience, the sound engineers didn't have time to do it. So uh, maybe something got lost. I don't know, because I couldn't hear to all the edits and I was not present in the process of uh, making the CD, really making... Um, choosing the edit. And then obviously it is also a question of artistic value because we know the best time to record which repertoire. If somebody comes to me and says to me now, Marina, why don't you record now all the areas of Puccini? I would say no, not because I cannot do it, but because this is not actual at the moment, because this is not my repertoire and I think that I still need to grow to do it, for example. And um, so here we don't have to go with a market, like market needs this or this music. We need to go with the individual taste and individual preferences. Uh, also, it, it means that I, if I choose, for example, to record the whole opera like Traviata, I have to choose the um, conductor and my partners in the way that we all are good psychologically and also vocally that we all match uh, in a kind of a way I do a casting in this case and I love doing it I love uh, creating this music it's, it's a very creative process and obviously also one of the other main reasons is I wanted to show the world what, that we really have many talents it doesn't uh, I don't speak about my recordings. I speak about recordings that are in the future and also, for example, Levi Segapane that we did. Um, one of the aims is really to show to the world the singers who already have a big career or who are in the beginning of big career that I think 
and to show their capacities, their, their musicality, their talent to the rest of the world, because not everybody can travel to Metropolita or, or to Vienna or to Covent Garden to listen to these singers. And even if they have a DVD, many of them don't have the album, which is a big pity. And um, so I wanted really to say that we are full of talents and uh, we should know whom we have. And so we created this label. There is another innovation you tested lately. You decided to publish your album Spirito in a very special format, apparently very closed to the sound of a concert hall. It's called Bubble. So what is it exactly? This is very interesting. Uh, this is actually the future. I think it's a future of opera. Well, anyway, it's a big progress in the audio world because Bubble it's a different format of recording. Uh, let's say if usually we have stereo, so we have two channels where we listen the music from, we have all the mix, all the sound going through two channels. In the case of Bubble, we have 23 plus one bass. So it's a completely different canvas. Uh, Bubble is the format where the CD is recorded, but there are two big installations. One is called Island and another is called Ocean, um, which one is like a big bed full of speakers, let's say, where you lay and you hear that the music really surrounds you. And the other is uh, many speakers put in the specific way in a big hall, which completely creates the effect that you are inside the music hall, which is really, really amazing. It requires a different mix, obviously, because you can very clearly see which soloist is standing where, where the sound comes from, but you have this very wide um, landscape of music which is coming. And this is really a genius invention of El Isa, uh, which is of the big company uh, El Acoustic, and I think it's a future technology because if we could have such a sound in the big uh, cinemas where we have HD streaming, we would have an impact of the real concert hall around us. So I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to see what is the future of the sound. And we are interested also in this. So Marina, you have another favorite repertoire. It is a bel canto. We remember the magnificent Anna Bolena at the Bordeaux Opera, Norma, performed in Toulouse, which you took over in Hamburg, Imogen from Il Pirata, which you were about to take over in Dortmund. Can I ask you what inspires to you these heroines, to whom you have devoted a full album, by the way? Well, Belcanto is a very interesting and very demanding style because this is all about a singer, a timber of the voice, musicality, um, breathing, phrasing. It's actually, you are, you are nude because under the orchestra very often is very simple and the voice has to express everything through the intonation, through the uh, diction, through uh, specific accents. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful style, very challenging, because if you look on all these heroines, which you just talked about, all the last scenes, and generally the, the scenes where the personage appears, it's not Mi no Mimi, it's a huge scenes in the end, like uh, last scene of Norma, for example, is a half an hour where you go on stage and you sing, 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 sing nonstop, um, duet, uh, big scene, and the end, the uh, kind of mini aria. If we talk about the same thing is uh, with the Anna Bolena, the same thing with Maria Stuarda, the same thing is Imogen in, um, in Pirata. So it's a very demanding repertoire and a wonderful challenge to also uh, prove your stamina, to see how you get through it. And also it's a wonderful challenge because you can play it wonderfully because you are so naked that all the attention goes to the voice, to you, and you can play it every time differently. You can really, um, you can really bring 
your own interpretation, your own psychology into the role. It's not that it's you cannot do it everywhere, but for example, in fantastic French music, you are much more connected with orchestra. Orchestra is with you in Puccini, for example, and Verismo orchestra very often doubles you. So it's not that you are alone and naked. While in bel canto, very often you are just it's a you know castanive ta 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 ti ta ta ta, and you are there doing the melody and moving forward back uh, so it's a really wonderful style uh, beautiful style uh, and a good challenge for me as an artist We just heard an extract of the opera Anna Bolena from your album Spirito. We will now move on to heroines, which are different but also very interesting for you and for us. They are those of Giuseppe Verdi. You regularly sing Straviata, of course. You interpreted Amelia on Simone Boccanegra in Salzburg, where I had the pleasure to hearing you. Next season, there will be Leonora in Trovatore at the Paris Opera. When can we expect an album dedicated to this Verdi's heroine? And I have another question. Are there any other Verdi's heroine you would like to sing in the future? Well, Verdi indeed is, a, is another wonderful composer with which I spent so many years because I have been singing Traviata since 2007, almost every season, and did 18 different productions um, of Traviata. And as you mentioned, Simon Boccanegra, and I did also um, I did also Luisa Miller, and I did Giovanna d'Arco. So it's definitely one of my favorite composers, also because it's very connected to my youth. Because as if you maybe know that I was studying in Parma, and Parma is the place really of Verdi and uh, Verdi lovers. So I had a chance really to go very often to the opera house and hear this uh, wonderful performances, sometimes very horrifying performances because public was shouting and booing and, and expressing themselves. It's like a, in a football match, you know, really crazy. So um, it made me think a lot what actually is Verdi style and what actually is appreciated by Italians in Verdi style. I also went to listen to Verdi competition. I was in Buseto. So it's a, uh, let's say so, it's a long love story with Ver Verdi, which I only now get completely engaged with because before I was not ready to face different, uh, I mean, a part of Gilda, the other roles of Verdi, I was not really ready to face. But now is the moment, and I'm really looking forward to my debut in Leo with Leonora in Troubadour. Um, yes, uh, I am looking forward to doing the other Verdi roles, like Hernani, uh, like um, maybe Vespri Siciliani, Uh, like Otello, for example, uh, obviously Falstaff, maybe, maybe in 
few years and some years Aida, because I still think it's um, it can be approached by lyrical. It has a lot of uh, bel canto element and it's kind of a mix Verdi of uh, between the first Verdi and what comes after. Um, Verdi album, it's a good question. Yes, uh, maybe, but not very soon because I want to really sing enough of it and I, I somehow need to find my points, my strengths. Um, yes, I am planning it, but I cannot tell now when. But Verdi is definitely going to be the central point of my, um, my art in next next years. These are plenty of good news for the public who will be able to wait for yourself incarnating all this reign of Verdi and eventually later this album dedicated to Verdi that everyone will be very excited to receive. Um, there is another repertoire where you're shining. It is the Russian repertoire, especially the Tatiana of Eugène Onegin by Tchaikovsky. She is still a very beautiful, tragic heroine. What differences do you find in herself compared to female roles of Belcanto or to the heroines of Verdi? Well, if we talk about Tchaikovsky, it's another wonderful, wonderful dramatic music. Uh, I cannot really objectively uh, compare it because this is the music which, which, with which I grew up because I'm here from Latvia and I was born in Soviet times and I saw Johnny Negin very often on stage. I listened to the, um, on the turntable, uh, to vinyls. Um, so uh, I understand the language. I'm from the mixed family. So this is really a kind of a part of me and every, almost every Russian have read Pushkin, Evgeny Negin. So it's a piece of my heart. <laughs> if we can say so. Uh, and, and at the moment, it's uh, the only opera of Tchaikovsky that I have sung. Uh, what's the difference? Well, Verdi has taken a lot from Bel Canto. Uh, there's, there are specific lines. Depends also on which Verdi we're talking about. If we're talking about first Verdi, middle Verdi, or the late Verdi, because late Verdi is very different from the first Verdi. So I'm talking about the first Verdi where we still have coloraturas where we still have um, uh, specific uh, lines uh, so many so many for example there is there is a line in Rigoletto just before Cortigiani Vil Razza Dannata which is taken from Rossini for example from the Petit uh, no from Stabat Mater da di da 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 uh, it's it's really interesting sometimes you sing and you say oh I know this piece this is this is from Verdi but this is not Verdi this is Rossini so you see that this time was very intense. Composers were influenced one from from another, and 
it was um, it, it was a natural involvement uh, evolution uh, while here in Tchaikovsky Tchaikovsky is um, is a Russian soul we had before him Glinka we had before him Mussorgsky other composers but Tchaikovsky put it in a different level it's already fully orchestrated uh, Dramatic, yes. In the end, yes. In the beginning, I believe we have to face Tatiana, which is a girl, which is, again, a kind of thing that I told about the French music that is very beautiful to portray first the girl, very innocent, very clean, very honest girl. Then she goes through this evolution. Then we meet another Tatiana who seemed to be a princess, beautiful, rich, uh, very educated, um, high society lady. But inside we still have this hurt girl who is still in love with Onegin. So it's really beautiful to see this, this change. And at the same time, they are like a kind of two different women, but the same woman at the same time. And uh, surely I love Tchaikovsky, and at this moment I could say that I, there is only Yolanta which I could do as another role of Tchaikovsky, because, uh, and also Prokofiev, uh, uh, War and uh, Peace, which is very rarely done to the, because there are so many personages, it's like 18 singers that are involved there, and it's, uh, it's a difficult piece of music, but beautiful. Otherwise, the rest of the Russian repertoire is quite dramatic for me. Or a bit light, like if we say about Rimsky Korsakov, it's a, it's a bit uh, towards Gilda uh, type. So uh, again, different challenge, different language, different style, different uh, orchestration, but uh, still a piece of me. Finally, you also regularly do concerts and recitals. One of the following will take place at La Scala in Milano yes. very soon. Can you tell us more about the program of this concert? Yes, finally, I have time and possibility to dedicate myself to the chamber music. Uh, so I'm having three recitals in La Scala in Toulouse and in Zurich Opera House, where I'm going to do um, Russian and Italian chamber music. Uh, obviously, one of my most favorite is French chamber music, but I need more time. I need time to, again, to do perfection on the French language. I need a perfection to really listen to all the existing recordings, to work with a coach, to get deeply into the style. And I definitely want to do it in the future. And the other is obviously Lideristica. Uh, I would love to do some Strauss songs, Mahler and Schubert. Also Brahms, but this comes probably later. So at the moment, uh, we're talking about definitely Tchaikovsky Rachmaninov and about uh, Respighi, Italian Respighi, uh, Verdi and uh, Tosti. So these composers are planned to be in these recitals and I hope you will enjoy it. Well, I think that at the end of the epidemic, everyone will need a lot of music and rush to the sky <laughs> to listen to you. <laughs> you know, a beautiful perspective, which I believe will warm everyone's heart. This is going to be a real pleasure and a great perspective for everyone to see all these great prospects coming. Uh, I believe, yeah. I, be I believe that after this, that everybody is sitting at home and having this hard time and being in fears and... Uh, it's a very difficult situation. Usually when it finishes, people want to join together, to go somewhere, to have a glass of champagne, to see a beautiful opera or listen to a beautiful concert. And this is usually the, the beautiful moment for everybody to understand that life is full of joy and, and art and music and friends. And I hope it's going to be very soon also for all of us. Thank you very much, Marina, for this interview. We are waiting for this opera in Paris for the more and all the concerts you are planning. Anyway, thank you so much for this interview and goodbye, Marina. Merci. Au revoir. This is now on this aria of Romeo and Juliet de Gounod from the album Elle by Marina Rebecca that we end this episode. You can read all my reviews, articles and interviews on the French website, putlaculture.com. 
And do not forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name Maria Stuarda. You are on Paul Fourier Podcast, the podcast of people who do opera for those who love opera. Goodbye. <laughs>